Starting in Unity 5, it's now possible to create animator state machines, states, controllers, layers, and blend trees automatically in the editor via the Animation Asset Creation API. In this video, we'll show how to create a simple animation helper window that will allow us to select a game object and three animation clip assets and then use editor scripting and the Animation Asset Creation API to create a new animator controller, including two states, a blend tree, and transitions with conditions for moving between them. Before we begin, let's take a look at this in action. Here, we have a game object in the hierarchy with an attached animator component with no assigned controller. If we go to the window menu, we see we've added our animation helper window. In our animation helper window, we've added references to the game object that we want to add our animation controller to, an idle animation, a walk animation, and a run animation. At the bottom, there's a create button, and when we press it, it will create the new animator controller and add it to the game object that we selected as the target. Let's hit Create. We can see now that we have a new animator controller that's been created in our Assets folder, and that animator controller has been added to the animator component of the game object. If we open up our new animator controller, we can see it has a state called Idle, a transition to our state called move, which has a condition for the speed parameter. There's a transition back to idle, also with a condition for the speed parameter. And if we open move, we can see we have a simple one-dimensional blend tree, which will blend between walk and run based on our parameter speed. Now that we've seen what's possible with this type of scripting, let's take a look at the script itself. In the editor folder, we've created a C-sharp script called Animation Helper. When creating editor scripts, we recommend placing them within a folder called Editor in your project. Anything in the editor folder will be ignored when building your game. Starting in Unity 5, it's possible to place things in other folders, but you'll then need to include platform-specific code to tell the compiler to only use those scripts when running in the editor. We can see an example of this type of platform-specific code in line 1, where we have hash if Unity Editor. This means that this script will only be compiled if we're running in the Unity Editor. In this case, our if and end if on line 72 enclose the entire class because we're only ever going to want to run this script in the editor. Animation Helper includes the namespace declarations using Unity Editor and using Unity Editor .animations. It will inherit from Editor Window. We add a public variable of the type game object called target. This will hold a reference to the game object that our animator controller will eventually be added to. We've also declared three public variables of the type animation clip called idle anim, walk anim, and run anim. To open a new editor window, we're going to declare a new static function called open window. We're using the menu item attribute here to add a menu item to our window menu in the editor that when selected will call this function. Once open window has been called, we're using get window and passing it the type animation helper to tell it that the type of window we want to open is our animation helper. Editor scripting uses onGUI, our immediate mode UI, which will display the contents of the editor window we're creating. For more information on OnGUI, see the information linked below. In OnGUI, first we create a series of fields in the editor window 
which we can use to specify the various objects needed to build our animator controller. First, we associate the game object variable target to whatever game object is added to the new editor field target object. To create the editor field, we call editor GUI layout.object field and pass in a string for the name of the field, here target object. We also pass in an object, in this case target, our game object, as well as the type of object that this field will accept, here a game object. Next, we set the parameter allow scene objects to true. Finally, we cast that to a game object using as game object. Setting allow scene objects to true means that we'll allow the user to select objects from the scene. We'll use the same workflow to create new editor fields for our three animation clips. In their cases, we're going to specify the appropriate type, animation clip, and their names respectively. For these, we set allow scene objects to false because we want our user to select our animation clips from the project assets. Once the user has specified the objects in the editor window, the next thing we want them to be able to do is to hit a button to actually create the controller using the specified objects. We'll need to add a button to our editor window and define what happens when it's clicked. We'll call this button create. We do this using an if statement with GUI layout.button create as its condition. If that evaluates to true, meaning our button has been clicked, we do the following. First, we check if the target is null, meaning it hasn't been assigned. If it is null, we throw an error in the console and return. Otherwise, we'll call our create function. In create, we declare a new animator controller called controller and set it to equal animator controller dot create animator controller at path this will create the animator controller asset in our assets folder. We add a single parameter to our controller called speed, which will determine both when to move from our idle state to our move state, and then within move, we'll use speed to determine the blend between our two animations using our blend tree. We add speed to the controller by calling add parameter from the controller created and passing in the name speed as a string to give it its name. We specify the type of parameter using animator controller parameter type dot float. With that done, we add our first state idle to layer zero of our controller. Because it's created first, this will become the default state which the entry node will transition to when entering this state machine. This is specified by the orange transition line visible in the animator controller. To do this, we declare a new animator state called idle state and set that to equal controller.layers0.statemachine.addState idle. Our idle state will contain a single idle animation, idle anim. We set the motion field of our idle state to idle anim using idle state dot motion equals idle anim. This specifies which animation will play in this state. Our move state will play a blend of our walk anim and run anim animations using a blend tree. Blend trees allow us to interpolate between multiple animations. For more information on blend trees, see the information link below. We've declared a variable of the type blend tree called blend tree. Next, we declare a new animator state called move state and set that to equal controller.createBlendTree in controller, passing in the parameters move as a string for the name and BlendTree along with the out keyword. CreateBlendTree in controller will create a new animator state in the controller and return the state. So we use the out parameter to be able to reference our blend tree and set it up. Next, we set the blend type of our blend tree to simple 1D by setting its blend type variable. The parameter to control the blend will be the speed parameter we added earlier. We set the blend parameter variable of blend tree to speed. 
We need to add our two animations, walk anim and run anim, as children of blend tree using add child and passing in each of the animations. With our idle and move states ready, we need to add transitions between them. First, we declare a new animator state transition called leave idle and add it to idle state using add transition. Then, we pass in the state we want to transition to as a parameter, in this case, move state. We also create an animator state transition called leave move to transition back to idle. To add conditions to our transitions, we call add condition from each, passing in the animator condition modes greater and less, respectively, along with the threshold value 0 0.01 and the parameter name speed. With that done, we get a component reference to the animator component attached to our object and set it to equal the newly created controller. Using the Animation Asset API, it's now possible to script and automate repetitive animation tasks. For more information and full API documentation, please see the information linked below.